Cardano was recently flipped when it comes to market cap for the entire blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Now, as a part of today's video, I want to highlight what chain recently flipped Cardano. And I also found something extremely interesting that might actually pique your interest. So as a part of today's video, I want to break all of this down. What's up, Bitty Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Faree. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about a project that has just flipped Cardano in the sentiment here in the ecosystem. Without any further ado, let's just take a look here at Coin Market Cap. As it stands, we have a ton coin, which I believe is somehow or in some shape tied back over into Telegram, now flipping Cardano. So they've got a market cap of 23 billion recently overtaking ADA, which has a market cap of $21 billion. Now, this has caused a pretty big frenzy in the community. I want to take a moment just to state that when tokens flip Cardano and vice versa, when Cardano flips other tokens, it's not the end of the world. A lot of the projects that are currently above Cardano from a fundamentals perspective do not outshine or do not outwork the ADA community. Again, I mentioned this in a recent video. This is a long game. A lot of projects, for example, like even Doge, right, has recently overtaken Cardano. So Doge is above TonCoin as well, coming in at number eight. Now, just ask yourself, what sort of utility does Doge provide other than being uh, a chain, right, known as a meme? Again, when you take a look at the fundamentals here in the space, a lot of it doesn't make sense. And this recent flipping with TonCoin is just another one of those cases. Now, I want to go ahead and just quickly show some interesting data here. So we're going to head over into coincarp.com. And what I've done is just taken a look at the token distribution. And again, this raises some concerns for me, which you as the viewer may not be aware of. So as it stands right now, we have the rich list, which shows the top 100 holders, 50 holders, 20 holders, and 10 holders in Cardano. But then it also highlights how much of the total supply, right, or the circulating supply that they currently hold. So if I jump over here, as of May 7th, so just yesterday, the top 10 holders hold about 8.96 or just about 9% of the total ADA supply. If we take a look at the top 20 biggest wallets, they own about 10%. The top 50 wallets, they own about 15%. And then if we take a look across the board at the top 100 wallets in Cardano, they own about 21% of the total supply. Well, you might be asking, how does this compare to, for example, Ethereum, Avalanche, Solana, but then also even TonCoin? I think you guys would be surprised to find out how the holder distribution looks like for TonCoin in just a minute. Now, let's take a look here at Solana next. So Solana, very similar numbers to Cardano, 6%, 10%, 16%. And then 21%. So nothing out of the ordinary there. Looking at Avalanche, we got 1%, 2%, 4%, and 5%. So they're actually showing probably the best token distribution here. You don't really have a huge amount of the um, available supply being held by a few number of wallets. Let's take a look at Ethereum next, and we'll take a look at TonCoin. So interesting thing here with Ethereum, the top 10 holders hold about 45%. Top 20, 47, top 50, 52, and the top 157. Now, I took a closer and a deeper look to better understand what could potentially be going on in Ethereum. And there's actually one wallet specifically that you'll notice here that holds the majority of the ETH supply, which is about 35%. So if I jump over here, I took a look at that particular address, and this is related to the Ethereum beacon chain, also known as ETH 2.0. So it states here, this uh, wallet is also labeled as the Beacon Contract Creator. And if you're not aware, people can basically provide their ETH into this contract, I believe in exchange for the V2 version when that comes out. Now, I'm no ETH expert. Feel free to correct me if I've mislabeled or misidentified anything here, but I tried to do my best to identify where this actual funding was coming from and the purpose of this particular wallet. So when we take a look at the ETH data here, that particular wallet does appear to skew the numbers. Again, we've got Avalanche here, pretty solid distribution. We've got Solana here, pretty solid distribution as well. Now I'm gonna jump back into Cardano just to kind of reset the stage here. Again, biggest wallet holding about 3.85% of, of the supply. 
Now let's take a look at TonCoin here. And we can see that the top 10 holders hold 61% of the supply. The top 20 hold 70%. The top 50 wallets hold 85%. And the top 100 wallets own 93% of the circulating supply of the ton coin. This is a huge red flag to me personally. This tells me that a very, very small group, right? Or a very small minority holds the majority of the asset. So there could be some potential, you know, dumps in the near future. If these 100 wallets who hold the majority want to sell at a higher price, maybe when there's FOMO, right? Maybe when Bitcoin's broken over 100K and people are looking to come in and basically put their money into the highest traded assets with TonCoin being at number nine, you could imagine that a lot of people will see that asset and want to buy the coin. So this is alarming for me personally to see. Um, very poor distribution. I highlighted in a prior video the tokenomics and the allocations, right, that we've seen for Cardano, Solana, Avalanche, etc. And the majority of the tokens for Cardano's ICO went towards a public sale, meaning that it was spread out amongst more general community. Now, with TonCoin, that seems to be the exact opposite. Again, with the top 100 holders making up 93% of the current circulating supply. So again, I took a closer look here at some of these addresses and I even jumped over to the ton explorer here, which breaks down the top 1000 accounts. So these numbers do match what is listed on the coin carp website. And again, I'll leave the links to this down below if you guys want to go ahead and check them out. Um, but I couldn't actually find any sort of specific information surrounding who owns the wallets aside from some of these more human readable names. So we have an elector contract and I think there might actually be a centralized exchange down here, which holds quite a bit of the ton token. We've got the foundation holding quite a bit here as well. We've also got a bridge here holding some of the ton coin as well. So um, really, really alarming. Um, I'm not sure what this main address is used for, but it's really interesting to see just the token distribution with that chain. So in closing, I wanna to quickly touch on some of the recent stats about the wallet creation there as well. And if we take a look right now, they have about 3 million on-chain activated wallets. So you've got over 3 million wallets, but 100 of them basically hold 93% of the supply. This tells me that the remainder of the wallets, right, millions of wallets, either have little to no ton actually held within them. Again, if we had a much fair distribution, you could expect that the majority of the wallets would have at least a decent amount. It may not be a whale's worth amount, but they at least have a little bit there, right? So imagine 7% of the circulating supply being split up amongst 3 million wallets. In Cardano's case, we have, um, let's see here, about 80% of the supply. So I'm gonna jump back over here. So we have the top 100 wallets holding about 20%, meaning that the remaining wallets are in charge of about 80%. And right now we have over 4.5 million wallets in Cardano, meaning that that 80% is split up amongst that 45, or excuse me, that 4.5 million wallets, as opposed to TonCoin where they have 7%, right? Not 80%, but 7% split up amongst almost 3 million wallets. So you do the math there. Now, while I'm also taking a look at the ton stats, I ran across the number of validators here, right? So you can see on the left-hand side there, we have a total of 299 validators, which it's basically their job, right? To keep the network up and running. And these appear to have coincided with some of those top 100 wallets. So it looks like the validators, right? Which may or may not be community members, basically hold the majority of the ton token. And just for comparison's sake, let me actually jump over to pool tool here. And we'll take a look at all the validators currently right now for Cardano. So as you guys can see there, we've got over 2,800 validators, which have at least one Lovelace staked to them. So Cardano with almost 10 times the amount of validators compared to TonCoin, again, just something else to quickly point out for the viewers. The last thing I wanna to touch on is just their ecosystem. So you can head over to DeFi Llama, take a closer look here. We have ton stakers, which is liquid staking. So this is actually not being counted for their TVL, which is why it's grayed out here. But their biggest TVL or their biggest DAP by TVL, I should say, when it comes to their platform is a DEX. We've got number two, another DEX. 
number three, another DEX. And then after that, we've got a privacy platform and then some very small derivatives lending and borrowing with less than a million dollars worth of TVL. Now, I don't see any mentions of stable coins here. And if I jump over just for comparison sake to, to take a look at Cardano, right? There's no mention of staking because of course they're counting Cardano staking a little bit differently. But short of that, we have Indigo with nearly hundred million dollars worth of TVL followed by Minswap, a DEX, followed by LQ, lending and borrowing, A Starter, another DEX, LendFi, lending and borrowing, another DEX, Stablecoin, and then DEX, 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 lending, 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 and RWA. So the ecosystems um, are still both very young, definitely a lot less in terms of TVL, currently on ton um, compared to Cardano. And again, I just encourage the community to just go back to the fundamentals, right? Um, I see a lot of people, you know, worried about the fact that TonCoin has taken over Cardano. I've personally got no worries. Um, it just is really surprising how this space works. It's not always about fundamentals. It's just about where the liquidity goes. And a lot of times you may have good actors that attract liquidity, but you could also have bad actors that attract liquidity. Again, my job is not to judge, but to present you guys with the facts and let you guys take a look as look at it as you wish. Now, one thing I was not able to track down when it comes to ton was the actual ICO allocation or the token distribution when the actual network launched and to compare that to Cardano. If you watching this video do have that information, I'd be more than happy to take a look. Make sure to go and leave a comment down below. So um, rest assured, I don't think Cardano is gonna be knocked out of the top 10 forever. Um, if maybe, for example, Avalanche passes us up, just wait till the bear market where a lot of these projects don't end up bouncing back, right? It's not to say that Avalanche won't bounce back or that ton won't bounce back, but you have to have this long-term mindset that it's not about the price appreciation solely in the bull market, right? Because there's gonna be liquidity flowing in and out of all these different ecosystems, but it's to make sure you can provide a product that can be sustainable and that can hold you until the next market comes along, right? Because those bears are brutal. And that's typically when we begin to see a lot of the people move out of this space including layer ones in this and actual projects built on top of those L1. So that'll do it here for today's video, breaking down the recent flippening and addressing some of the concerns when it comes to token distribution between Cardano and Ton. I hope you guys found this to be helpful. If you did, I would appreciate you. If you could smash that thumbs up, if it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything going on in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then make sure you leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.